And finally, after years of talking about the gut microbiome and the role that I think it played in allowing me to get healthy, I finally had my gut microbiome tested and we're going to go over the results and see what the gut microbiome looks like for a person in clinical remission from IBD. My name is Kenny Hannes and I've been in clinical remission from a severe case of ulcerative colitis since the end of 2016. Shortly after my diagnosis in 2014, I experienced a flare that was so bad I began filling toilet bowls with pure blood. After weeks of constant, bloody diarrhea throughout the day and night, I was eventually hospitalized. I lost 30 pounds in two weeks, had four blood transfusions, and was just barely able to avoid having my colon surgically removed. After I was released from the hospital, I eventually began studying nutrition. In 2016, after reading several articles and studies on PubMed, I learned that there seems to be a relationship between a dysbiotic gut microbiome and the pathogenesis of IBD. So I wondered what would happen if I optimized my gut microbiome and reversed the dysbiosis. So I designed and began following my own gut microbiome optimizing protocol, which finally allowed me to achieve the level of health I was looking for, which is to be able to consume a full range of foods without bleeding, mucus, urgency, or diarrhea, to have well-formed, solid bowel movements, and to be on no medication. And finally, after years of talking about the gut microbiome and the role that I think it played in allowing me to get healthy, I finally had my gut microbiome tested and we're going to go over the results and see what the gut microbiome looks like for a person in clinical remission from IBD. Gut microbiome testing is so cool because it can show you what's happening inside your gut microbiome and determine whether you're in eubiosis or dysbiosis. It can show you the levels of probiotic microorganisms, the level of pathogenic microorganisms, and thus give you a quantifiable target to aim for as you work to improve the composition of your gut microbiome. And if you do repeat testing, this can show you over time whether you're actually improving or not. Which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Thrive. Thrive is an awesome company that sends you a very simple at-home gut microbiome testing kit that analyzes the state of your gut health and identifies potential problems. The test will ship straight to your door with specific collection instructions. All you have to do is activate your kit, complete the test, and return it. Thrive uses the results of your gut microbiome test to create a personalized food plan to help move your gut microbiome towards eubiosis. The food plan provides recommendations for the types of foods that you should be consuming more of and less of to improve the composition of your specific gut microbiome. And something that separates Thrive from its competitors is that Thrive also gives you an option to have a custom probiotic developed for you based on the results of your test. The probiotic is designed to provide specific strains of probiotic microorganisms that your specific gut microbiome needs in order to move towards eubiosis. If you click this link in the description, Thrive will give you a whopping 50% off of your gut microbiome test. Okay, let's get to my Thrive gut microbiome test results. I sent in my test sample on March 31st, 2021. So this is what my gut microbiome looked like about two weeks after my colonoscopy that was performed on March 15th, 2021. So once my results were in, I logged onto the Thrive dashboard and the first thing I checked was my overall gut wellness score and my gut diversity score. These two results give a broad view of what's taking place in the gut microbiome. So my overall gut wellness score was 81% compared to the healthy average population from the American Gut Project, which is 62%. My gut microbiome diversity score was 90% compared to 83% of the healthy average population. So according to Thrive, my gut is close to an ideal state. And I think this was probably a pretty accurate snapshot of my gut microbiome at the time. This was roughly two weeks after my colonoscopy, which showed almost completely healthy mucosa, except for two small areas in the cecum and the ascending colon. Two weeks after this colonoscopy, leading up to my Thrive Gut Microbiome test sample, I was back on my protocol trying to improve those two specific areas after a year of eating generally healthy, but not actually following my gut microbiome optimizing protocol, as mentioned in my 2021 colonoscopy video. So again, I think this was probably a pretty accurate snapshot at the time. If my hypothesis about the gut microbiome and its role in the pathogenesis of IBD is correct, my overall gut microbiome score was high enough to keep me in clinical remission, but not quite high enough for complete endoscopic and histologic remission. Now, the exact number for the overall gut wellness and gut diversity scores may be somewhat arbitrary. 
For instance, I did not have my gut microbiome tested either before or soon after my 2018 colonoscopy when I was in clinical, endoscopic, and histologic remission. My scores in both categories at that time may have been a few points higher or lower than my most recent scores. Since Thrive's numbers are based on the healthy average population from the American Gut Project, it's possible that the needs of my gut microbiome that are required for me to be in endoscopic and histologic remission differ from the needs and scores of the healthy average population from the American Gut Project. So the point is to not get too hung up on the exact numbers, just to use them as references for the general direction that you need to aim. Now looking at the home page on the dashboard, you can see that my test results picked up 47,256 microorganisms in my gut microbiome. This is cool data, but it's so vast that it's difficult to find actionable steps to take trying to comb through it all by yourself. Luckily, Thrive does most of the heavy lifting for you. If you look over here at the My Bacteria Level tab, you can see that while my gut wellness and diversity scores were pretty good, my bacteria levels were only 50% optimal according to Thrive's assessment. So I click here, and this is cool. You can see that Thrive has isolated 11 bacterial strains. 10 are probiotics and one is pathogenic. And Thrive gives you your level compared to the healthy average from the American Gut Project, and highlights if you're deficient or if you're in healthy ranges. So I come up here and click sort by status to see which specific strains I need to work on. So my bifidobacterium looks good, my blotia looks good, eubacterium looks good, and fecal bacterium looks good. My levels of pseudomonas, which is a pathogenic type of bacteria, are in healthy ranges compared to the healthy average population, so that's good. And finally, my roseburia looks good. My results show that I'm deficient in every other probiotic bacteria on this list. So this is where I need to focus to improve my gut microbiome. Acromancia is the first probiotic strain that I'm deficient in, and when I click here, it gives a description of Acromancia, the best foods to increase it, and some of the specific benefits of Acromancia. And I can do this for all of the other strains as well. Allostypes needs work, Bacteroides needs work, Lactobacillus, which is very important, it's one of the most well-known probiotic strains and plays a major role in the health of patients with IBD, needs work, and Ruminococcus needs work. And this is where Thrive is just awesome. I come up to my personalized probiotics and you can see that Thrive has a probiotic formulated that specifically is meant to help address the strains I'm deficient in. Thrive does this by either adding the deficient probiotic strains directly to the supplement or by adding certain probiotic strains to the supplement that will modify the environment of the gut microbiome to encourage the growth of other specific probiotic strains. So this is very cool technology. However, you do have to pay a monthly subscription for the custom probiotic, so be aware of that. And then over here is the personalized food plan that is also meant to help address the probiotic strains you're deficient in and move the gut microbiome towards eubiosis. The whole idea behind the personalized food list is that while consuming general prebiotic foods is a really great step, each individual person will have specific prebiotic foods that will benefit their gut microbiome more than other prebiotic foods. So the personal food plan is a really cool feature of gut microbiome testing. However, I want to be clear here. I do not think that Thrive or any gut microbiome testing company is going to make perfect food recommendations all of the time. They are doing their best to go through a vast amount of data and make the most appropriate recommendations for your gut microbiome. But after looking at my food recommendations and reviewing the sources listed as evidence as to why those recommendations were made, I actually came to different conclusions on a few foods compared to the conclusions that Thrive came to. So, I just want you to be aware that you need to do your due diligence and make sure you understand why a certain food was recommended to be consumed or avoided. With Thrive, you can do this by reading through the sources they have listed and see if the reasoning for their recommendations makes sense and fall in line with the main target of overall eubiosis, as determined by your results shown in the My Bacteria Level tab. I think the majority of Thrive's recommendations are going to be pretty spot on, but I like to double check. I want to make sure that I understand why the recommendations were made and modify them if I think it's necessary. Okay, so that's my 2021 post-colonoscopy gut microbiome analysis. My overall gut microbiome wellness score was an 81, but my bacteria level was only 50% optimal. Now once again for context, these are my results after a year of eating generally healthy, 
but not actually following my gut microbiome optimizing protocol. Anyway, if my overall hypothesis is correct, these were good enough scores to maintain clinical remission and keep my colon looking really healthy. I feel great, I have complete dietary freedom when I choose, and I have no symptoms. However, I definitely have some work to do because I want both of those scores to be way higher, especially the levels of bacteria that I'm deficient in. I want to follow best practice and continually work towards improving the health of the gut microbiome and thus the health of my colon. Gut microbiome testing is a really cool way to track your progress and see if what you're doing is actually working. If you do get your gut microbiome mapped, you can integrate your personal gut microbiome data with the general gut microbiome optimizing principles from my bootcamp series on YouTube or from my online course Biome Optima. All of the information that has allowed me to get better is available on my YouTube channel for free. However, if you want a condensed, streamlined version of the information without having to hunt through my channel, I recommend Biome Optima. This course condenses all of the information from my YouTube channel, plus new information, into one succinct and sequential step-by-step -step educational process. The course is broken down into five modules, covering mentality, what I believe causes IBD, seven key gut microbiome optimizing strategies, a list of approved foods and drinks, and ends with a downloadable five-week sample daily routine and meal plan. You will also receive access to the Biome Optima Facebook group. And I do plan to periodically update and add to this course over time as I continue to learn more about this topic. I am not a doctor or a dietitian and the information in this course is intended only for educational purposes and should not be acted upon without the approval and supervision of a licensed physician. Seriously, I want you to be as safe as possible and to err on the side of caution. Please do not act on this information without the supervision of a doctor who knows you, who understands your current level of health, and is aware of the many other health and medical factors that are unique to you. That being said, I know what it's like to be sick. I understand that feeling of brokenness. I understand the mental and emotional fatigue that comes along with it. I also know what it's like to get better, to regain that freedom. I can't and won't promise that you will get better, but I think it's important to at least try to work towards improving your situation, whatever it may be. I want your situation to improve, and I think that improved nutrition, exercise, and mentality can go a long way towards making that happen.